we're going to look at copying arrays now. It's actually, pr this may be one of the more tricky sections in this chapter. So arrays are a reference. It's a variable that's a reference to a position in memory. And when you say that, here we're going to create a double. We'll just go ahead and keep using our integer array counts. Um, and then I'm going to call this I'll just call it copy. There we go. Okay. So copy is going to equal counts. And I don't really want to change any of this stuff around. I don't need that. We're not really using index anymore, but that's fine. Counts. And then this guy's called copy. All right. So we'll run it. And look at that. All right. That's probably what you expected. Uh, now let's go ahead and change counts uh, position 2 equals, we'll do negative 99. So it'll look pretty obvious. So position 2, so that 6 should turn into a 99. Uh-oh. Counts, yes, that's what we were expecting, but the second one, which should be called copy, the second one also had its value changed. So why is that happening? Well, it comes down to what is an array. An array variable is a link to something in memory. And line 20, we did not make a new array. All we did was we set copy equal to counts. And what is counts? It's a pointer to a position in memory. So they're actually both pointing to the exact same thing. So they're actually the exact same array in memory. So if you change one, you change the other. Uh, and let's go ahead and do copy position three equals, um, let's go zero, sure. So what's going to happen? The third element, the last element in copy is going to be zero, but counts is has the exact same element, so it's also going to get the value 0 right there. So if you actually want to make a proper copy, you need to declare a new array with the correct size and then copy everything over. So let's go ahead and do that. That is happening here in, in the text. Um, oops, don't want to give away that little trick there at the bottom. Uh, we need to create a new array. All right, I could go new int four because I know there's four elements in counts. But if I don't know, remember you do counts dot, and then this gives you all the methods uh, and properties. So we're going to go use length. Whatever I put in counts, maybe I do another uh, element in there. Now I don't have to update this value because it's just going to grab the length of counts. I don't really want to, well, yeah, we'll leave that in there. All right, so let's go and do a for loop. Int i equals zero, i less than counts dot length plus plus i. And remember, I'm using that pattern where we start at zero and we go, uh, we don't want to stop when it equals length. We want to actually stop, uh, we want to stop when it equals length. So you if you start at zero, you do not want to go less than equal. You want to just stick with less than. All right, let's think about line 20. What did line 20 do? Well, let's go and run this now. It did make a new array, did make it the right size. Um, and well, I changed position three to zero, but luckily it was already, it was already zero. All right, so we do have a second array. That's pretty clear. Uh, but it doesn't have the right values in it, so we're going to go ahead and fill in the values now. So we go copy i equals counts i. And now, individually, they got the values, and when we changed here, copy at position 3. There we go. That should stay up now. At position 3 of copy, we have a 0. And at position two of counts, we have negative 99. But notice they're not affecting each other. Now, if I move these up, 
before the copy, you'll see that we changed counts and then here the value showed up. Now why don't we see zero in copy? Well remember every element in copy got overwritten right here in the for loop. Uh, you can do fancy stuff here. You can do times two, double everything, um, or any other math operation you'd like to do. You know, whatever uh, you might need. Maybe you need to uh, multiply uh, some sales tax or something else. Oh, well, I want to let me multiply by that number because these are integers. You can't multiply an int by a float. So, anyways. There you go. So you can make some modifications. Uh, you also can use the arrays.copyof. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm going to comment that out. Arrays dot. So there's a lot of methods here. I'm just going to do copy. So which one are we going to use? Uh, looking there, we're going to go this right here. It's an int uh, array. So just hitting the tab key, left parentheses. So first argument will be counts. And index is how far you want to go. So we'll go to counts.length and go ahead and run this. All right, so it did make a copy. We didn't do anything with it. You do need to go copy equals so that you actually set the value of copy to be this copy of the array. And then we'll go and again, move those back down below comment them out for now so we can see the copy actually shows up. Uh, now we'll uncomment them and that's I'm doing that with control slash and now you can see that they have different values. I mean they got the original values but then we changed that to negative 99 but it stayed 6 here and we changed it had that 14 in here but changed to 0. Uh, so that's how to make a copy of an array and you could do a counts.length of minus 1 but all that that'll just not copy the last element. This is how many elements to copy. And you can, of course, put an integer here, put two in. Uh, well, now we have a problem because there's no position three in that array. There's no position two in that array. There is a position one in that array. Uh, so it copied the one. It did copy the four, but I overwrote it to a zero. Easier if I just comment that out. So it just gets the uh, part of the array. Uh, and there's a ton of these uh, array methods. Even just copy of, there's a ton of these right here. You can do a start and an end index. Uh, so it's up to you which one you want to use at different times. So this is how to copy one way faster.